Table Tennis England competitions are held year-round and nationwide. This is everything you need to know about entering your first table tennis competition. There are different national competitions for different age groups, genders and standards. Core age groups include under 15s, also known as cadets, and under 19s, also known as juniors. But there are often events for under 11s, under 13s, under 17s and more. Some examples of national competitions that players may enter include one-star, two-star, Grand Prix or four-star events. The star grade indicates the size and standard of the event. Some events may be played as male or female only, and some may be mixed gender. The National Cadet and Junior Leagues is one example of a mixed gender competition when boys play against girls. A full list of national competitions can be found on the Table Tennis England website. If you are a member of a club, your coach or other club members may be able to suggest the right level of competition for you to enter. Some competitions are invite only, and you will need to qualify to take part in these. Others are open and anyone can enter, providing they meet the competition eligibility criteria. There are also lots of different formats, individual, doubles or team events. An event might be straight knockout or start with a group stage before progressing to a knockout or could be an all play all in a round robin format or many more. Again, more information on this can be found on the website. In order to take part in a national competition, you must be a member of Table Tennis England. This will provide you with access to our competition's booking system, provide you with insurance, communications and access to TTE.TV, where you can view many of our national competitions through our live stream. More information about our membership can be found on our website, and your membership can be purchased over the phone or through our membership system, Sport80. If you are a player from outside England, please call our membership department for guidance on how to proceed before trying to enter. Different events have different requirements in terms of membership level, but nearly all will enable members to gain a national ranking in their respective age group if they play and win enough eligible matches in a monthly ranking window. Once you have a Table Tennis England membership, you can enter a competition via the Sport 80 system online, or by another method, depending on who the event organiser is. At the time of entering the competition, you will be required to provide all relevant details and pay the entry fee. You will receive confirmation of your entry from the event organiser, and this is the person you should direct any immediate questions to. You should receive a pre-event email or pack which will contain all relevant information. You will also likely receive details of the other competitors and the draw for events you have entered so you know who you will be playing. All national competitions will take place at venues with toilet and changing facilities and drinking water. Other basic refreshments should normally be available to purchase, however this is not necessarily guaranteed, so please check in advance. You should bring with you a refillable water bottle, snacks and food, towels, your bat and any other spare kit and equipment. It is advisable to have spare rubbers for your bat and or a spare bat in case of any issues or damage that may be caused throughout the event. It is your responsibility to ensure the compliancy of your bat and rubbers. These must be on the latest ITTF list of approved racket coverings. If you're taking part in national championships, you must have your name on the back of your t-shirt. For all other events, you can wear any top or t-shirt, although this mustn't be white as this can affect your opponent's sight of the ball. Tracksuit bottoms, shorts, skirts, dresses or leggings are all permitted, so wear whatever you are most comfortable in. However, jeans are not permitted and footwear should be non-marking sports shoes. When selecting what to wear, bear in mind that the venues can get quite hot and so it is advisable to bring spare clothes. Finally, please ensure you pack some safety pins as you may need these for securing your player number to your clothes. Registration times will be outlined in the pre-event information that you will receive ahead of time. This should also state the starting time for practice and the start time of the first game. Make sure you allow adequate time to arrive, 
park, register, collect your information, and to warm up. Check pre-event information for details on parking and other facilities. If you are running late, make sure you contact the tournament organizer or referee. Contact details will be provided in pre-event information. When you arrive at the venue, visit the registration desk in the reception or sports hall to sign yourself in. Here, you will receive your number, event program, and schedule where competitions provide these. You will be told your number and be directed to that table. Your bag can generally be stored near to your table in a spectator area, outside of the court barrier. Inside the court, you can have your bat and a towel, but everything else, such as a drinks bottle or spare bat, should be kept on the other side of the barrier. You will be able to move around the sports hall freely and can spectate other games when you are not playing, assuming you're not required to help officiate. It is your responsibility to know when and where you are playing, so ensure you take note of this information, which will be provided either via email, on the website or on a results wall. Where there is competition on more than one table, there will not be announcements. The schedule will not always run exactly to time, as this will depend on things like game length, so you will need to keep on top of this and listen for announcements, check the boards or the referee's desk, which will normally be located beside the registration desk. There will be a designated area for the results and the schedule as games progress. Ensure you locate this area when you are at the venue. The registration desk and referee will be able to direct you to the right area. If you are competing in multiple events, for example a singles and doubles, then the referee should be aware of how progressing in your first event impacts on scheduling for other events, but if in doubt, ask. Depending on the size of the event, there may be dedicated practice tables. If it is busy, the practice area will be for players only and you will need to knock up with a fellow competitor. An hour before the event, match tables may be available for use too, please check. And once the other tables become available, the referee will confirm which tables can be used for practice. There will be two minutes before every match which is allowed for knocking up with your opponent on the table. A whole team of people help to deliver a table tennis competition. The three most important roles you need to be aware of are the referee. They are responsible for the draw, seeding, competition schedule, results, and implementing the regulations. The umpires. They officiate and score the game. The umpire gives the result to the referee, who collates these and works out how to progress the competition schedule. The tournament organizer runs the entries, logistics and is responsible for the venue, equipment and field of play, plus any emergency support. They will be your main point of contact pre-event and on the day. Yellow cards can be given out during games by qualified umpires. These will be given for racket abuse, foul language or unsporting behaviour. If you are awarded a yellow card, this will be kept on file. If you receive too many cards in a period of time, you may receive a suspension. Red cards are given for more serious offences by the referee, which will immediately disqualify you from that event, and most likely, the whole competition. Some stages of a competition are sometimes umpired by players, and you may have to pay a deposit with your entry that will be returned once you have done your umpiring duties. A schedule will be provided if this is the case, and you may be asked to umpire in the games on your table that you are not taking part in. There will be a flip scoreboard you will use, and at the end, you will need to put the score on the scorecard, sign this, and then submit it to the referee. Whilst umpiring, out of respect and good etiquette to the players in the match being played, you should give it your full attention, and therefore not wear headphones, listen to music, or play on your phone. Also, you should call the score out loud in addition to turning the numbers on the scoreboard over. You are not expected to know the detail of all the rules or to address any subjective decisions such as legal or illegal serves, but you should be confident and knowledgeable enough to determine whether or not a point is valid if the players disagree, ensure service is alternating correctly, to indicate and time a timeout period, and to remind players of the basic requirements of the game if this becomes necessary. Of course, if you encounter a serious issue, you should halt the game and raise this with the referee. You cannot give out yellow cards or sanctions, but the referee can. Most venues will have spectator seating to the side of the tables, but this will depend on space and occasionally spectators will be required to watch from balcony areas. Each player is allowed a designated coach that can sit courtside. This person doesn't need to be a qualified coach, 
but must be the same person throughout the duration of a match. This person can change between matches, however. All players, spectators, coaches and officials are required to follow the Table Tennis England Code of Conduct, which can be found on the website, and foul language, abusive, aggressive or antisocial behaviour will not be tolerated. Players are responsible for their coaches, and coaches can receive yellow cards and sanctions too. If you need first aid or feel unwell at any point throughout the day, please visit the registration desk for help and advice. If you are knocked out of the competition, you can leave, providing your umpiring commitments have been fulfilled, though you may wish to stay till the end to watch the presentations which are made after the finals. Ranking points are available for taking part in most competitions. There are two main ways to get your first ranking. The main route is to play four eligible matches against ranked players in a calendar month and to win one of those matches. The points you are awarded will depend on how many matches you win and the rankings of the players you competed against. Alternatively, if your event is a designated starter event, such as a National Cadet or Junior League, then you will be given a standard starter rating of 100 points if you get three wins in a day against other unranked players. The event results will be sent to TTE and updated once per month. You will find your ranking on the TTE website and on your Sport80 account. To find out more about rankings and eligible matches, visit the website. If your event uses the online entry in Sport80, you will be asked to submit any accessibility considerations as part of your entry. If your event uses another method, then the organiser should provide opportunity in the entry process for you to advise on any accessibility considerations. If in doubt, you should please contact the tournament organiser in advance of the event. The withdrawal process will depend on the event, but you should discuss a potential withdrawal with the organiser at the earliest opportunity. A withdrawal is much easier to facilitate before the draw has taken place, but if you unavoidably withdraw after the draw has taken place, then the other players are likely to be disadvantaged and you may not be eligible for a refund. Table tennis competitions are fun, friendly and open to everyone. For more information, check the website and join in.